Assalamu alaikum friends, my name is Bilal Khan and this is my 15th video of DevOps. So in this video I am going to discuss about what is YAML. But before discussing what is YAML, let's take a look at what is a markup language. So a markup language is not a programming language. You need to keep this in mind, alright? It prepares the structure for the data or prepares the look or design of a page, alright? Basically it will, it will provide the structure of the data how it will provide the structure of data we will be discussing later on in this video but if you want to know that how it prepares the look or design of a page you can take an example of a HTML page so the HTML page will provide different kind of functionality like where the uh, header will be aligned or where the body will be aligned or where the footer will be aligned similarly where the form will be aligned where the table will be aligned so it will basically prepare the look or design of a page Alright, and it provides the child and parent relationship. So let's say in the HTML you have a parent call like header. Inside the header there is a child called body, and inside the body there is another sub child called uh, let's say form. Inside the form there is another child called div. So in this way you have multiple childs inside the parent. So this will be uh, this will build a relationship between child and parent. Alright. So here you can see that here is a page, this is a parent, inside the page here is a table, inside the table here is a list, uh, this is also a page for it and after that the, uh, here are some bullet points that will contain the data. All right. So after that uh, let's take a look at that uh, what is YAML and what the YAML stands for. So the YAML stands for YAML and Markup Language. All right. It means that YAML is not only a markup language, it performs more functionality than that. What are those functionalities? Let's take a look. So basically, it's a data format that is used to exchange the data. All right. So it will store the data in some kind of format and it is used to exchange the data. We have looked in the previous slide, then the uh, markup language will store the data but uh, as you can see that the YAML will be used to store that data in some kind of format and uh, it can also exchange the data. So it is similar to XML and JSON. All right? it is, uh, these are also the markup languages. It is a human readable language. So YAML is a human readable language that will represent the data. So a human can easily read this, uh, the data that uh, the YAML contains. All right? In YAML, you can store data and not commands. Just like in programming languages, there are a lot of commands, but the main focus of the YAML is to store the data. So that's why it is human readable. You can easily store the data inside the YAML. In markup language, now this is a difference. In the markup language, only objects are stored. All right. So as we have seen that the markup uh, YAML is not only a markup language, it contains more functionalities than that. So the uh, more functionalities are this, that uh, the markup language only objects are stored. But YAML stores the objects and the data also. Alright, so it will store the objects and the data also. So let's take a look at what is an object. So an object is everything like a person, place or thing. Alright. So it is anything like a person, place or thing. I am an object, you are an object, uh, a car is an object, a uh, fruit is an object, anything, any place or a person is an object. So basically it will show you that the object contains the structure and the behavior. All right? So let's say here is a mango. So the mango is, uh, is an object that has a structure, all right? oval shaped structure and behavior. So the mango has a juicy behavior, all right? So anything that will contain the structure and the behavior will be called object. In terms of programming, a student is an object, all right? So let's take an example of a student that is an object and all the variables and functions are the structure, all right? So the variable contains data and let's say the, uh, the student name, the student email address, the student uh, school, school name, the student uh, home, and all the details that are relevant to the student. So these data will be, this data will be stored inside the variable and the functions that will perform the 
um, functionality on these on the on the students. All right. So this is basically the data that will be stored uh, will be called the structure. All right. And the behavior is to get the data, display the data, receive the data. All right. So in, uh, by applying this uh, by applying these variables by applying these data. You can get the data, you can display the data, you can receive the data. So these are all the functionalities that will be called the behavior of student. All right. So object is a collection of data and code. All right. So the code will be used to represent the object. All right. Means it contains a roll number, name, uh, city, email address. So this is the data of the object. And the code will be performed to uh, do some kind of functionality of inside of the data all right so inside the data if you want to perform some kind of functionality it will be with the help of code so it is the object is a collection of data and code all right so now let's take a look at uh, that uh, what here is a web page all right here is a web application and now the web application is trying to send the data to an android application all right so after that the android application is also trying to send the data to the machine learning uh, let's say machine learning data set or machine learning model so it will send, the data will be sent from web page to the android from the android app it will also be sent to the machine learning app in this way three devices are sending the data same data uh, uh, in these three devices all right so is there any way in which one file that has a single format should be used to transfer the data between multiple devices is there any way so now the question arises that what is the way to share the data between different devices using a single format so the answer of this is serialization and deserialization all right so now let's take a look at what is serialization so a serialization is the process of converting the data object that is present in the complex data structure all right into the byte tree let's take a look again so serialization is the process of converting the data object so the data object is one unit that is present inside the complex data structure all right so it will convert the data object into the byte stream all right and the byte stream will transfer it to the physical devices so the stream will transfer the data one by one one by one in the form of chunks in the form of data packets to the physical devices all right so let's take a look that here is an object all right and now this object is uh, uh, trans transferred to the stream all right so after the stream the data is transferred to the yaml database database or memory inside the application all right the object is transferred to the stream the stream is transferred uh, the stream that contains this object data will be transferred to the yaml file to the database to the memory all right so all the things that are present in the application so this is basically an application that will contain the yaml database memory anything that the object will be sent to it all right and after that uh, this is called the serialization all right from object to stream to stream to the uh, application and that application will contain the da uh, yaml database memory or anything that uh, the object will be received so this is called serialization now if the data uh, is received here now it will be converted back to the stream and after that the from the stream the data will be converted to object uh, this is basically called deserialization all right i hope you understood it so now what are the data serialization languages or files so the languages that will be used to represent the data are called the data serialization language so if you want to represent the, some data in the form of a language the language will be used uh, the, that language will be called data serialization language and these languages are yaml json and xml all right in these languages you can represent the data in code all right and the data will be transferred from object right from object to file here is the file all right so the data will be transferred from object it will go to the stream and then it will reach to the file and if you want to uh, deserialize it 
you, the data will be transferred from file, all right, to the object again, all right. So now, if you want to transfer the object data across different devices, you will use the YAML file, all right, because it has a single format in all the devices. So now it is uh, using one YAML file because it has a single format that will be transferred across different devices. It, it is called serialization. After it reached to the device, the YAML file will be converted back to the object data. It will be called deserialization. All right. So where are where the YAML is used? So basically, the YAML is used in configuration file of Docker or Kubernetes and it is also used in logs and caches, etc. All right? So what are the benefits of YAML? It is simple and easy to read. It has a strict syntax. It means the indentation is important. Just like in Python, the indentation is also preferable in Python. So similarly, the YAML is also using the indentation functionality. All right? So it is easily convertible to JSON and XML. You can convert it to JSON or XML. And more powerful when representing complex data. When you have a complex data, uh, it will, the YAML will be uh, more powerful to represent this complex data. So it has various tools like parser and that we will be uh, discussing in the 100, 100 days challenge in the upcoming video. So it has some various tools also. So the parsing means the reading of data is easy. Basically, it is focusing more on reading the data instead of the syntax. All right. So, more programming languages are using YAML. All right. So, what we have learned today is the markup language. What is a markup language? What is an object? What is serialization and deserialization? And the serialization language like YAML. All right. So, this is the theory part of the YAML. So, we will be discussing the practical side of it in the upcoming videos. So that's it. I hope you like this video. So if you like this video, then make sure to subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions, then ask those questions in the comment section below. I'll be happy to answer all of them. So till then, goodbye.